and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today I'm going to do a video about thing you ask me in I think every video Visual Studio Code extensions do I use. And I will make this video related to serverless and AWS applications. So I will focus on those specific extensions because I think I have like 2 million extensions installed, but I will focus on those extensions that help me in my productivity of developing uh, serverless applications and AWS applications. So have that in mind. Also, the philosophy I have when I use an extension is to try to not to leave the IDE. I want to stay in the IDE for as long as possible. That improves my productivity because the moment I open a browser, I'm lost in Twitter. So I try to avoid jumping windows and all have everything uh, within my IDE. So that is the type of extensions that I try to install and I try to use. So I don't need to go to the AWS console. I don't need to go to external applications. I just stay in my black world that is my ID because I like to have this dark theme as you might notice. Another disclaimer before jumping into the extensions is that uh, I will not show you everything that the extensions can do. Some of the extensions are very powerful and they can do like million things. I will just focus on the parts of the extensions that I use. You can go and explore the extensions later and see if there is some use cases that you would like to have that I have not covered, but I will just show you how I use those extensions. So that's an important disclaimer because you will see that some of the extensions are very, very powerful. So before jumping into the video, I listen to you. So you need to listen to me and like this video, please. <laughs> Let's go to the console. So the first extension I want to show you is the AWS toolkit extension. So this is the official AWS extension that you can get from Amazon Web Services. That's a creator and it has like a million things. It does a lot of things. So this is one of those extensions that I use just a tiny bit of it. And you might be thinking why well, you can do so many other things. I know, but I don't use them. Sometimes I discover new functionality and I end up using later, but I might stop using it. So I will show you two things I do with this extension that I like. So uh, you can install the extensions. You can find them. I will leave you all the names in the description box. And when you install them, then you can proceed to, to work on it. So I open here. Um, an Amazon state language state machine. So this is a step function definition and I'm going to render the state machine. There is a little button in the screen that you can press to render, or you can open the command panel in the Visual Studio and select that uh, AWS render state machine. This is something I use always when I'm developing state machines because I like to see it. It's so much helpful if I can see what my machine is doing. And this is like how I develop it. So I will write the state machine. I will render it. I will write it. I will render it and I will see if it's doing the way um, what I want it to do. So here you can see the drawing of the state machine. So that's the first use case I have for this extension. The second use case is to get the API <laughs> URL of API Gateway. So it happens quite often that you have an application, a serverless cloud formation template, or some template or whatever, you deploy it to the cloud, and then you need to get that URL because you forgot to put it in the outputs of your cloud formation. So what to do? Well, you go to the AWS console, look for the API Gateway, click, 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 and get the URL. By that time, I'm already lost in Twitter. So what I like to do is to use the AWS extension. When I deploy an API gateway, then I open the AWS extension and then I go to my region. So the AWS extension is sorted by region. So you have to uh, know in which region you deploy. Then you open API gateway, it's sorted by service within that region. And there you will need to find the application, the stack that you just deploy. In this case is my first serverless uh, app. And there you right click and you can um, basically copy the URL and it shows you the two stages that it has. In this case, the stage that is the default one and the dev that is like the one I created in this, uh, in this particular case. So I 
click on there and it appears in my um, clipboard so I can use it in uh, Curl or in other services like Postman or Thunder Client that I will show you in a moment. So this is something I use a lot because I keep on forgetting my API gateway URLs. The next uh, extension that I want to talk about is my favorite. So without this extension, I cannot work. The other one is, well, I can figure out things. I, I, I don't do that many state machines. Like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I can get the URL from my CloudFormation output. That's okay. But the serverless console extension is is like amazing. I've been using um, some this extension for years already. I don't know for how long. Since I discovered it, I cannot stop using it. It's so handy. So this extension has basically two functionalities and I use them both. The first one is to uh, get the logs from your Lambda functions. So uh, basically you enable the extension and then you go um, to an application that you deploy. I have a couple of Lambda functions that I deploy, and then I go to the serverless console extension and I add a service. There I decide what is my source and I always choose CloudFormation, my profile, it reads from my, my the ones that I have defined in this computer. And then I need to put a title. This title doesn't mind what it is, it's just something so you can find it. Then you pick the region where this uh, application was deployed and it will bring the stack names that are in that region. You pick the stack and there you have your um, uh, logs for your Lambda functions within that stack. It's so handy. So here you can see all the logs and the cool thing is that the logs refresh quite fast. So if you are working and you want to see what is going on, the, the log groups refresh very, very fast. So here you have the two functions. You can see the logs of this application that I ran uh, four days ago. And if you have some JSON, it will format it for you. So it, it's, it's quite nice and things start getting a pen. It's just great. The second functionality is also super, super handy to not to go to the AWS console. This is something I could live without, but I use it a lot. It's like the get the URL from the API gateway. That is to get the items that are in a Dynamo table. Sometimes you want to verify if things have got saved or something. So there uh, you can uh, get the items. So for example, if I do a curl, now to that API and I save something in the database that, that Lambda function does that. Then you will see directly in the save hello function that is the one that's saving in the database. You will see after we refresh that the, the logs are there because the Lambda executed and we can see the logs right away. So it's very, very fast. So this took a little while because it was a cold start and the Lambda had to initialize, but in general, it's super, super, super fast. And also we can check the table and there you can see it now that there's three items, the one that we just added. So this is a super handy, um, super handy extension. The third extension I want to talk about is the serverless ID. This one I use sometimes. It's not one of those that I could not live with, but it's quite handy. So this one helps you to um, autocomplete. So it helps you to autocomplete CloudFormation and some um, and some templates. So for example, if you type in your uh, some template or in your CloudFormation template like function, it will show you like uh, what are the mandatory values for a uh, serverless function and, and it will help you to get started. So in that way, you don't start always with a blank a slate. You can start with that. For example, for the table is even more useful because Dynamo table has quite a lot of mandatory parameters. So you can uh, get that working right away. So I like it a lot and I use it for that. Another feature is that it allows you to make sure that you have the things uh, in the, the right references. So if, for example, if my API now is my API one, then everything will turn red because that reference is not referenced. <laughs> and you can always click in any reference or things like that and it will take you to the definition of that. So if you have a very big uh, YAML file, you will find all things around. The next extension is a YAML validator. So this one helps my CloudFormation to make sense. So it helps me to uh, make sure that my references are in place again, that my uh, subs, my ifs, and everything that is a little bit CloudFormation specific is uh, right. So it helps me with that. And also it has 
um, some kind of knowledge on the main values that I need to put for all the different uh, elements in CloudFormation. So it helps me with something is missing. Uh, so it does some lean thing as well. So it helps me with that. I don't have an example right now because they are all on, but this one is quite handy when you're writing a lot of CloudFormation. So I recommend you to install it and have it there in the background to save you a little bit of life. The next one, uh, the next extension is one that I discovered a few weeks ago. It's pretty new. It's called I Am Legend. And this is an extension that we all needed. This is, uh, has been released at the beginning of January. So it's very new and it's something we all needed. It's an extension that basically uh, help us with the I Am policies. So uh, I have been using it since I installed it quite a lot. So for example, if you have an, a statement and you need to know what is the right name for that policy, you just write, start writing your, your statement and then you do um, like the action and you put the service name and it helps you with the capitalization of the service name. So for example, Dynamo, and then it's like, oh, what kind of things I want to update an item. So you put Dynamo and then you put update and then uh, it starts suggesting you things and then you can find the one that, that you're looking for, the right capitalization and everything. So uh, you can find all, all of the parameters, all the permissions uh, to write the right I am policy. So this is something very, very useful. So you don't need to go and check in the documentation all the time how you write this, how you write that. And the last extension I want to talk to you today is something that is not serverless, something that is not AWS, but it's very, very helpful. And it's also very aligned to my philosophy of not leaving the cons, the IDE for any reason. And also you ask, every time you see this extension, you ask me, what is this extension? So this extension is standard client. And this is a REST API client for Visual Studio Code. So if you're familiar with Postman, it's like Postman for Visual Studio Code. So uh, you can basically do a lot of things with it. So I have it here. I already have some calls that I have created. So you can see your activity, like you can see in Postman, you can um, open previous um, calls, previous requests, and you can send them again. So the, your, the user interface is very familiar if you're familiar with these services. And then you can do post and you can put different query parameters, different headers, different body, like, what you can do in one of these uh, REST clients. And you can see the response, you can see uh, all the information that is coming from the service, like the headers and whatever. You can also configure like collections so you can have calls that you have saved or environments for different types of call. So you can do quite a lot of things in here. So it's a great extension to try out if you are like me that you get distracted with everything and you want to stay in your ID when you're working. So that's it for me today. I hope you liked this video. And now every time you ask me the question, what extensions I'm using, I will forward you this video. I see you next week with another episode. Fubar. Ciao, ciao.